Welcome to Book of Acts Now Global School and Global Church. Glad you're here with us today as we're continuing our study in the Hebrew alphabet. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. We've just started over. We're on uh, letter number three, and it is the letter Gimel. And this is that representation. And it means to lift up, to benefit um, camel. So the word picture is that of a camel or pride. And uh, so some of what goes back with that historically is that the camel was always used uh, to bring gifts. Like if you were going to gift another king, you'd load up all the camels and, and send a, a train of camels bearing gifts. It could also represent receiving benefits or it could represent pride being lifted up. And so let's take a look at some biblical words that uh, use gimel and take a look at how this letter is used. It gives us insight into what the Bible writers had to say and what they meant. Okay, foreigner is made up of just two letters, and we have gimel and we have Raish. Okay, so um, <clears throat> again, gimel, the camel, and then we have Raish, which is uh, man. And so sometimes it means, you know, highest person. Um, and so foreigner is a, a camel man and the, the idea is this the word picture is if you see a person riding through town and they're riding a camel they must be from out of town because they use these uh, beasts for long distance travel and so automatically you assume they're a foreigner and so that's the word picture that goes with foreigner okay pride we have gimel and then we have um, aleph which means uh, first, strength, or ox, sometimes father, and then hay to reveal. And so uh, if a person is proudful, what they're doing is uh, they're lifting up their strength. And so you might think uh, of a person who lifts weights, who's into, um, you know, the um, bodybuilding and competition and flexing his muscles and showing off his strength. Um, that's pride. And so the biblical picture is whenever you're trying to lift up your strength and not God's, pointing to self, pointing to who you are and how, you know, how much strength you have, you know, there's kind of a spirit of competition there sometimes, isn't there? But that's the definition of pride. And that's pronounced. Uh, you have the gimel is the G sound, and then you have an E, two dots here. Two dots here again, E, um, and then hey, which um, just blends in. And so it's gahi, gahi, pride. Okay, to redeem. What does it mean to be redeemed? Well, it's, this is an important concept. Let's take a look at these letters. To be redeemed, we have gimel. This little mark here is, uh, is the A sound. And uh, aleph on its own doesn't have a sound, and so it goes with the valve assigned. So it's E, or A, and then we have uh, the Lamed, which is L, Gahal. And so uh, what does it really mean? Well, to instead of lifting up strength, your strength, you're lifting up God. E-L, L is, is the, um, the word for God. So here you have E-L at the end of this. So you're lifting up L, or God. What comes to your mind when you think about that? Redemption and how, how God is lifted up. Where is God lifted up to where you can see redemption taking place? Come on, Mount Calvary. Yeah? Nailed to a tree. Lifting up God. That's why I said, as I be lifted up, I'm able to draw all men into me. And when you look upon me, you will experience my redemption when you put your faith and your trust in my sacrifice. Okay, we have, uh, again, the, the, the letters for camel, uh, benefit or camel. And so it's the lamed. Here's an A mark. And then we have the, the mem here, um, which, which means massive waters and an A mark. And then lamed, L. And so uh, this is pronounced gamel. And what does it mean? To lift up massive waters of the shepherd's staff. 
I thought that's an interesting word picture. You're thinking of the shepherd's staff, you know, would have had a crook at the end of it and then a, a, a long rod. The shepherd's staff had water in it. I mean, that's the word picture we get, right? And And so... Does the shepherd have living water? He said to the woman at the well, if you ask me, I'll give you living waters and you'll thirst no more. She's like, where are you going to get that water? Well, he said, not only do I have that water to give you, but if I give you this living water, it will become in you a fountain and a river will flow out of your belly. Um, referring to the Holy Spirit, living water and a river will flow out of you. And then it happened. She went back to her village and said, come see a man who told me all things I've ever done. And the whole village came to salvation of faith in, in Yeshua. That's the living water. That's the benefit. You know, the camel was used um, to send blessings. If one king wanted to bless another king, he'd send a whole train of camels laden down or burdened down with gifts. And so camel became associated with benefits or blessings. And that's what the Lord does. He sends us blessings. Amen. Somebody, you know, uh, I remember reading a word a while back. They, had, they saw a picture of camels loaded with blessings uh, coming to the nation. And they, they believed that God was saying the transference of wealth is getting ready to take place where the Bible talks he's going to transfer the wealth of the wicked to the righteous. And the picture, the prophetic picture that was given was a train of camels with blessings coming to our nation. Okay, so to do good or mercy. Gamal. So we have, the, we have here uh, the G, Gamal. This is the M or the Mem which means um, massive waters, and here is the shepherd's staff. So to do good or to show mercy is to lift up the shepherd's staff. Interesting, when they came to crossing the Red Sea, and the enemies coming behind them, about to destroy Moses and the children of Israel, God tells him to lift up his staff, which is a symbol of mercy. That symbol of mercy goes out over the water and guard. God parts the water. What a beautiful symbol. God is extending his staff of mercy to each of us because of what the Savior did on Mount Calvary. Because he became the Lamb of God, which also was an act of mercy. I mean, know that, that this is one of God's major attributes is mercy. Now, all of these letters have something to do with covenant, which is the last letter in the alphabet, the top. And so if you connect this letter with the top, with covenant, and you go down through here, then you begin to get an idea. To be redeemed is to lift up God so that you find covenant with him then you will experience redemption. Benefit, to lift up the massive waters of the shepherd's staff when you connect with covenant. Mercy, to lift up the shepherd's staff so that you can see, you can see the covenant. You know, I was doing some reading um, and seeking God about what's going on in our nation right now. There's a lot of fear. You know, whether it's the pandemic or election or different things that are going on, economy, a lot of fear. The children of Israel could not enter into the promised land. It wasn't just that they refused uh, to go forward. They chose to believe. Did you know they had fake news back there? They got a bad report. It's like, hey, there's giants in there, man. We're like grasshoppers in their sight, and they're going to eat us. Big cities with uh, walls and no way we, you know, we can do this. And they gave, a, they gave a false report. Yeah. 
And, uh, and they chose to believe it. And, they, and here's what they did. This, actually, God sending them there and asking them to spout out the land was a test. Because what he wanted them to do was to look at all of that and also look at the, uh, the milk and honey in the land and conclude, wow, praise God. He brought us here to give us this fantastic place. Yeah, those problems there, he's got that. I mean, he's the God who gave us manna, signs, wonders, and miracles. And he's going he's gonna to honor anything he's said to do. He's going to uh, supply. Our shoes didn't wear out when we were going through the wilderness. Our clothes didn't wear out, and there was no sickness among us. That's our God. But you know, their response was, they drew back, and they believed the fake news. And they said, would that we just would go back to, let's choose another captain and go back to Egypt. Matter of fact, let us die in the wilderness. We're okay. And God said, hey, I was listening when y'all said that. And I'm going to give you what you asked for. Everybody 20 years old and above, you're going to die in the wilderness and your carcasses will be left out there. That's what happened. Because they failed to believe what God promised. And what they were doing um, is they were rejecting covenant with God. And so God said, why should I provide for you and take care of you? You're rejecting my covenant and my promise. I've borne with you all of these, you know, 80 years, two 40-year trips. Send them back out in the wilderness. Wow. There's mercy, but there also is accountability and justice in dealing with God's covenant. And so when they went to Jericho, I'm giving you some of my sermon today. When they went to Jericho, again, they were tested. Here's a wall city, huge walls. You know, they had a king inside that city, and they had warriors inside that city. I can imagine the warriors were up there with bow and arrows looking down saying, well, all these people marching around, being clowns, marching around our city. Should we shoot them? No, let's wait and see what they're going to do. God said, listen, if you're going to honor my covenant, lift up the ark, keep your eyes on the ark of the covenant, keep your eye on the promise, don't you say a word. You mean no grumbling? Man, it's hot out here today. I wish I'd have brought more water. The sun's burning me. You got any extra sun, suntan oil? There was none of that going on. You keep your mouth shut and keep your eye on the covenant. Don't you mumble, don't you complain, and don't you dare say anything about how big, how big the warriors are up there on that wall. You keep your eye on the covenant. And, at, and they did that for six days, marching around the city. On the seventh day, you know what happened. They blew the trumpet, they gave a great shout, the wall fell flat, and they went in and took the city. Because they kept their eye on the covenant, which is what God wants us to do. Keeping our eye on the covenant. So this week, as you think about Gimel, keep in mind that you will always be lifted up by God's mercy if you keep your eye on the covenant and walk with him. He will supply. He will take care of you. And guess what? He's able to take care of this nation with whatever's going on right now. Don't you pay attention to what people are doing politically. You keep your eye on the covenant. Because God is going to bring us to where we're supposed to be. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us today as we have shared about Gimel, the benefit of being lifted up in your mercy and walking in covenant. And we thank you for blessing us and bless our nation this week. And Father God, we pray for all who are in authority that we might live godly lives and in peace and that your kingdom will come and your will will be done in this nation. We pray in Christ Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.